What's good, Lunatics? I am back with another episode of What's On My Nintendo Switch, where I try to share with you guys all of the latest games that I've added to my Nintendo Switch collection. Now, this is on top of all the other games that I've already talked about in previous What's On My Nintendo Switch videos. And today, I feel like it's gonna be a pretty long video because there are a bunch of games that I wanna talk about. And if you wanna add me on my Nintendo Switch, here is my friend code, feel free to add me. I like friends, I like having friends, I accept everybody. So the first game I added to my Nintendo Switch, which I have been enjoying thoroughly, is Yoshi's Crafted World. Now this is a side-scrolling platforming game starring, of course, Mr. Yoshi, or Miss Yoshi, or, or I don't know. I love the art style of this game. You've got basically 3D characters moving around in like this two and a half D plane. The whole premise is basically that Kemic and Baby Bowser attempt to steal this Sun Dream Stone, which has like the power to make anyone's wildest dreams come true. And when they steal this stone, a bunch of gems are sent flying across the world. And basically that leaves you to have to recover them all. Many of the levels have a lot of complexity to it. Like they can flip around to a full 180 and it's like a whole new side of things. It's not the hardest game in the world. Basically, you're just using Yoshi's tongue to eat enemies, throw objects, and avoiding certain enemies and obstacles as well. There's also a two player multiplayer game mode, which each player can maneuver their own Yoshi through the game level. It's really a simple game, but it's a fun time in my opinion. I don't know if it's worth the 60 bucks they're trying to charge for it i say don't pick up this game if it costs anything more than 40 dollars. i don't think it's worth more than 40 dollars, but i do think it's a worthwhile game to have in your collection for sure another game i added to my nintendo switch is street fighter 30th anniversary collection do i really have to tell you about street fighter i don't think i have to tell you about street fighter but street fighter 30th anniversary collection basically it's a compilation of 12 different arcade classics from street fighter so you got the original street fighter you got street fighter 2 the world warrior you got the champion edition you got turbo hyper fighting you also got super street fighter 2 and super street fighter 2 turbo you got street fighter alpha you've got street fighter alpha 2 you got street fighter alpha 3 you've got street fighter 3 new generation you've got street fighter 3 second impact and you've got street fighter 3 third strike pretty much all of the classic arcade street fighters you can also play online with street fighter 2 turbo hyper fighting street fighter alpha 3 and street fighter 3 third strike it's just dope to have all of these games on one cartridge and you you know get to play all of these different versions of street fighter you can see the different art styles how it evolved over time if you're a street fighter fan i definitely recommend it it's just a good time another game i added to my nintendo switch collection is kimono Mono Friends Picross. Now I'm a big Picross fan. I love Picross games. And pretty much Kimono Friends Picross is just a Picross game with a bunch of characters from Komodo Friends. And Komodo Friends is a Japanese media franchise, which was created by a manga artist, Mayo Shizaka. Not really complex about this game. It's a standard pick cross game. You pretty much solve the puzzles, create an image, and it's based off of, in this particular game, Komodo Friends characters. It was developed by Jupiter, who creates my favorite pick cross games. There are a bunch of pick cross games on the Nintendo Switch. You have pick cross S1, S2, and they just released pick cross S3, which is also another game I've added to my Nintendo Switch collection. It's just a great way to waste time when you don't want to dive into to a heavy story based game. If you're a fan of Picross, definitely pick up Komodo Friends Picross and Picross S3. That's about a good 100 hours or more worth of gameplay right there by itself. Speaking of games you play to kill time, Tetris 99 is another game I've added to my Nintendo Switch collection. I love Tetris. Tetris is one of my favorite puzzle games, period, ever, hands down. And so Tetris 99 is like the, the, the Fortnite of Tetris, where you battle against 99 other players and you try to be the last one to survive. There are some unique gameplay elements that help you strategize the best way to defeat your opponents. This is one of the best games you can play to try to get better at playing Tetris. And they're also adding like an offline mode as well, which I think is dope. Definitely pick it up if you like puzzle games. Another game I added to my Nintendo Switch collection is LA Noir. Now, LA Noir is a detective action adventure video game. It was originally released back on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 back in 2011. But then it was re-released back for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and the Nintendo Switch way back in 2017. Finally picked it up, added it to my collection. I think out of like 20 bucks. It's actually a pretty well-reviewed game. The story is set in Los Angeles back in 1947, and it basically follows an LAPD officer who solves a bunch of cases across five different divisions. You gotta investigate crime scenes and look for clues, follow up on leads, and also interrogate suspects. And your actions and your success at all of these activities are gonna impact how much of each case's story is revealed to you. It's a solid game to get, especially if you can get it for a good price. If you're into that type of vibe, that type of game, why not? Pick it up. It's pretty good. 
I also added Box Boy and Box Girl to my Nintendo Switch collection. This is another like kill time puzzle platforming game developed by HAL Laboratories and published by Nintendo. It's the fourth game in the Box Boy series, and it is the first one to be released on the Nintendo Switch. And for the first time in the series, actually, it features a two-player multiplayer mode. Listen, it's a simple game. It's not too complex. It's a game you can play to kill time. The main gameplay mechanic basically deals with you generating a chain of boxes to try to tackle these different obstacles and reach the end of the level. There's a limit in each level on the number of boxes that you can use, that you can create at one time. But you can use the boxes to block hazards, press switches, build bridges. There's over 270 different levels to play. That's the most any of these box boy games have ever had before. So I'm not playing Picross. I'm not playing Tetris. I'm playing some Box Boy. And another game that I added to my Nintendo Switch collection is Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. Now, this is an action adventure hack and slash video game developed and published by Grasshopper Manufacturer. It came out back in January. It's of course part of the No More Heroes franchise and features Travis Touchdown fighting Batman, who's the father of Bad Girl, uh, an assassin that Travis actually killed before. Batman and Travis are drawn into this possessed video game console and they gotta fight through its various different types of games. I definitely think the game is worth checking out. It's not the No More Heroes game that a lot of us wanted, but I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty fun. It can get a little repetitive sometimes but I don't know. Read up on some reviews. If you can get it for less than 30 bucks, less than 20 bucks, definitely pick it up. I think it's worth it. Next game I added to my collection is Darksiders, the War Mastered Edition. Now I gotta be completely and utterly honest. The only reason I added this to my collection was because they released a version of this game physically with an error on it. This is not how a Nintendo Switch case is supposed to look. What's missing, the key thing that's missing is the red spine. As you can see on most Nintendo Switch games, you have a red spine where the title of the game is and you have a little red backdrop where Nintendo Switch is. That's the reason I bought the game. <laughs> I wanted to have this rare variant because they have since updated all of these games to have the red spine. But the game Darksiders itself is a hack and slash action adventure game developed by Visual Games and published by THQ. The game basically takes its inspiration from the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse with you taking a role of the Horseman War. It was originally released back in 2010, Nine years ago on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 and it just came out to the Nintendo Switch back in April. There are actually a few Darksiders games in the series. You have Darksiders 2 and Darksiders 3 as well. I don't know much about the game, haven't played the game yet, but glad to have it in my collection. Trying to get a full Nintendo Switch collection and you got to do it somehow. So there you go. And these next three games I added to my Nintendo Switch collection just to have them in my collection as well because they probably won't get much play from me just to be completely honest. And that's NBA 2K Playgrounds 2, NBA 2K18, and NBA 2K19, the 20th Anniversary Edition. Now while I enjoy basketball, I'm not, I'm not the biggest basketball fan and I'm definitely not the biggest basketball game fan. Now NBA 2K Playgrounds 2 is developed by Saber Interactive and published by Mad Dog Games. You get a roster full of both active and former NBA players. You fill up your roster of players by playing different modes to earn different packs. The game's gotten really mixed reviews. I like the art style. It's weird, it's quirky. And NBA 2K19 is a basketball simulation game, so it's more true to the real sport, the actual sport. Gameplay-wise, it's a fun, competent basketball simulator game. But there are certain elements of the game that a lot of people aren't a fan of. Like there are some microtransactions in the game that'll get you to spend more money. It's just a little slimy, you know? Not a big fan of microtransactions myself, but if you just want to enjoy some some basic basketball 2k19 is the way to go but if you want to save some money pick up 2k18 why not another game i picked up for my nintendo switch is onimusha warlords now this physical version of onimusha warlords is japan only they did not create a physical version for the united states and if you haven't played onimusha warlords i definitely think you should it is a classic game that originally came out in 2001 on the playstation 2 and it was remastered in january for the nintendo switch it's an action adventure game developed and published by Capcom. It's set in the Sengoku period and focuses on the samurai Samanosuke Akeshi who fights against the forces of Nobunaga Oda. It's got a great story to it, a great unique visual art style of its own. The only knock I would really give it is that it's kind of a short story but it is an enjoyable one and one I think you definitely should give a try at least once. It's classic for sure. Next game I added to my Nintendo Switch is Warriors Orochi 4. 
This is a hack and slash game developed by Koi Tecmo and Omega Force. I picked it up basically because it was on sale, had a good price. I never really got into the Warriors Orochi games, but like the previous games, you're given control of a three-man team consisting of characters from the Dynasty Warriors and Samurai Warriors series. And each character has a class type that determines their ability, whether that's power, speed, and technique. Also this time around, you got this new concept of magic and sacred treasures. And those are techniques that allow characters to perform special feats to overcome enemies. You got 70 missions spread out over five different chapters the game has gotten pretty good reviews i might dive into it i might check it out if you played it let me know what you think about it but yeah got it in my collection now oh yeah and if you got some games that you think i should be playing let me know in the comments i like being introduced to games that i know nothing about especially like eShop games and indie games i know one of my homies over on facebook matthew hassenbola recommended katana zero to me and i've got to say i have been enjoying this joint this is a kind of difficult 2d action platformer game developed by ascii soft and published by devolver digital put it this way the game has no health bar and being hit is gonna result in an instant death you navigate a bunch of side scrolling levels trying to kill enemies in that level using your blade or environmental traps you can deflect bullets slow down time dodge attacks it is a pretty fun game and it's got a cool little art style to it as well i definitely recommend checking it out shout out to matt for the recommendation thank you i appreciate it and also here are three more games i added to my nintendo switch collection you got final fantasy 10 and 10 2 the hd remasters you've got final fantasy 12 the zodiac age and world of final fantasy maxima now final fantasy 10 and 10 2 are classic rpgs final fantasy 10 was the first final fantasy game to go fully 3d as opposed to like the pre-rendered backdrops of the previous games one of the best final fantasy games in my opinion and then final fantasy 10 2 uh, was a direct sequel to Final Fantasy X, the first sequel Square ever released for the Final Fantasy series. And actually, I played X2 before I played X. I don't know why I did it that way, but I guess I was just more drawn to the all-female cast. I thoroughly enjoyed X2. Honestly, it's like a toss-up for me between X2 and X in some ways. The game was super fun. And then you got Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age. This is a game I did not get to play back when it originally came out, so I'm glad it came to the Nintendo Switch. The Zodiac Age is basically an HD remaster of Final Fantasy XII. Got a remastered soundtrack with a few new tracks and improved performance in the game and whatnot. I am currently just starting my adventure, so I look forward to unraveling this story and being able to play this joint fully and thoroughly. And then we have World of Final Fantasy Maxima, which is a role-playing game developed by Tosi and Square Enix. It was originally released in 2016 as World of Final Fantasy, but Maxima includes some new characters from the Final Fantasy lore. The new enhanced version also features the avatar change system. It's got turn-based mechanics like a lot of the classic Final Fantasy games. It's got its own cute little art style to it as well. It's not as well received as like the mainline Final Fantasy games, but I wanted this in my collection because the physical version of this game was not released in United States. I believe this one, this particular copy is from South America. So I definitely wanted to have in my collection. Of course, I'm trying to build out a collection, a full collection of Nintendo Switch games. And yeah, I think I've added some pretty cool titles this time around. Yo.